Hello everybody and welcome back, it's Creative Redensi back again, also known as CR. Now in this live stream, or if you catch on the replay as a static video, it's going to be about creating and making in general. Not specifically, uh, well it's basically not going to be a creation mode time, but more about why even create or make something at all and some chit chat behind it now of course i'm no expert in survivalism bushcrafting or preparedness just trying to learn more and put that knowledge into something constructive hence why i enjoy creating so much <laughs> So we're going to go through the creation or making from start to finish. Now mostly this video or live stream will mostly be audio. There will be very little in, in way of visual or video aid. It's actually because the information is more important. Load up the side chat here. <clears throat> Get my cup of coffee out. So I did start the stream a couple minutes early just to give some people some time in my uh, event notification wasn't the best lead time in advance for time, but well, I guess it's better than nothing as they say. Hello Michael Skinner, and welcome, thank you for dropping in, I appreciate it. Alright, well, since I have one person in, I'm gonna whip up the intro here. Whip up the intro here. Boom! CR is in the house. And as you can see, I got my intro and banner for the top. Now, like I said, this is mostly going to be an audio type of video stream or live stream, I should say. So, with that in mind. I'm going to use the color red, because now red has many, um, well, it stands for a lot of things, but in this case, it's going to stand for passion, <laughs> such as my passion for creating, <laughs> and besides, so give me a chance to bring up the mic a little bit closer to me here. So that way I can interact with a little bit more with the chat here. So I actually don't even have to look at my OBS here. Because, like I said, I'm just having a static image. That way I can, uh, what's it called, leave uh, YouTube open. So I can leave the chat, side chat open and still see it. So yeah, why create or make at all? I mean, why, why as humans, species, why do we create at all? Well, for the most part, generally speaking, people create out of necessity, a need for it. So, let's say in 
very, very, very early times. <laughs> we need, as humans, and you know, that whole biology thing, we needed ways to, well, in the beginning, survive. Because we weren't gifted with these things such as speed, claws, big teeth, or overly strong or tall. So we had to find our ways of doing it. So now, probably the most easiest example to think of out is tools. I mean, tools is like probably in front of something as important as like fire for something that we came up with. I mean, tools, sheesh, with tools and you know, depending on the tools and the resources, you can almost create, make anything. I mean, virtually anything's possible. You know, sky's the limit. Only limited by your imagination or something like that. Hello, f f Farmall f Fanatic. How Thank you for taking the time to drop in. So like I said, this is mostly gonna be an audio uh, track. Well, track. Why am I saying track? <laughs> Mostly gonna be an audio stream. I've seen some other people doing it, and so I'm like, eh, you know what? I think the audio portion is more important. Maybe I'll move my image a little here. Oh, wait. Uh, I can remember it. Maybe I'll move my image a little here. Show some more red in there. Why not? <laughs> Just change it up a bit. I'm appreciating everyone that's dropping in, and that's been supporting the channel, and supporting the create the creative or or the creation process. <clears throat> it reminds me that you know people are enjoying it, so I know I keep dishing it out and. Well, have more content. So, anyways, back to what I was talking about. So, so from early on, humans, us, our great, 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 great ancestors, when our population was, let's see, probably one thousandth of the amount that we have now. My maps right. I think so. Well, anyways, it all started with the need to fulfill our basic needs. So we had we have that pro we have a problem. Well, something that we have to solve or an issue or a problem, feeding ourselves and etc. etc. So we had to come up with something. Now, you know, nowadays with like internet and stuff like that, some things are a little bit easier, but think about the process of creating something from scratch. Especially in the beginning steps of it, where a lot of the times it could have been from trial and error, maybe even a fluke. Something you were trying to do something and you came with something else to come up you came up with something else instead. And there's a prime example of something like that is Kevlar. Kevlar wasn't even meant to be stomping bullets. It was meant for tires initially, but from trying to come up with something that didn't turn out so well to, oh, wow, I, it helps with this air problem or issue extremely well, for example.
so let's see, where was I? So yeah, from pre prehistoric ancient, well, actually beyond the, before the ancient Stone Age prehistoric type of time. You know, and then an infant stage of human development and all that stuff. Like I said, we, we didn't, nature, modern nature didn't give us, you know, super big muscles, speed, maybe even endurance. You know, some we probably didn't even know how to swim initially, probably, <laughs> if I think about it. But we did have certain things. Maybe, I think, you know, opposable thumbs. You know, that we use like every day <laughs> for text messaging and all that stuff. And, you know, a brain capacity or well, a brain size. So we were able to, you know, someone early, early on saw a problem. Oh, I get it. I get it. I see fruit. I see fruit. Uh, you know, I'll use a coconut for example, it's probably not coconut, but something like that. And there was that problem of, you know, you want to absorb the energy from it and you're just like, think, think, thinking about it, like, it seems easy nowadays, but imagine like, let's say, 10,000, you know, 50,000 years ago. Like, like really Stone Age, like maybe even before that, before the tools, before the hand axes, before all that, you know, someone had to come up with the idea, someone had to create the idea, or start making it. Now, you know, for example, coming back to this kind of fruit on a tree thing. You know, we had to think about that. It probably started off with, you know, things that we could find readily available. So, you know, I know I've been using the Stone Age and stuff like that as an example, but, you know, it was probably stones, rocks. You know, and to, even before that, or along the sides of that, probably would the natural materials that exist we start to use that stuff come up with stuff you know kind of put it together and try to make something out of it then later on as things developed and stuff like that we start to combine things that we created, made, or ideas, and start to put them together, and you know, combine them and have a combination of two different things. So, for example, again, as far as I know, because I've been watching like documentaries and reading about it a little bit more. Something, for example, like a hand axe was probably one of the earliest type of tools. Then someone had, you know, whoever, right, came up with a concept of, hey, why don't I put a hand on it? And now you have a combination of two things. You have a hand axe, which is basically a wedge, and you have a stick. From nature, probably uh, lashed together with something or whatever, or even, it was probably more primitive where it was just wedged into a stick and you know, stuff like that. And basically, you have a compound type of tool or, or combination type of tool where it has two things so that wedge, hand axe, 
and a stick, which is basically extension of your arm, or, you know, and makes it, well, have more leverage. So the power, uh, stuff like that. Hey, Dashell, thank you for taking the time to come by, man. I appreciate it. Like I said, it's mostly going to be audio, just uh, live stream. And like, where I go for the creation or making from it, an issue or a problem to trying to make or develop a solution. And like I said, it's mostly audio just because it is. Because I don't need visual aids for this. It's, you know, we've all learned about this stuff in school and stuff like that. I mean, there's plenty of documentaries online about it. But I just want to go through the kind of, you know, how does someone, how does it all just come together? Well, maybe that's how it comes together. Maybe it just comes together. I'm just going to move my static image around just so you guys can see. And if anyone's wondering, I'm using the color red to kind of... It was, well, well, show my passion <laughs> for creating or making. My love for it, as they say, you know, you know, red's supposed to kind of symbolize like something like blood. Well, I mean, I think creating's in my blood, or at least in my head. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, so coming back to the Stone Age thing, let's, I mean, fire, I mean, we, anyone that's into the bushcrafting or survival type of community realizes things like friction and fire, rubbing two sticks together. Just imagine going through that process of creating or making or developing it. You know, this is what, you know, this is before a lot of things, right? Before the Egyptians and all that stuff. I mean, just think about that. The next time you are trying to make or develop or create something, and you're going through this, the process of it, just imagine someone way, 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 way back then trying to develop make create fire friction right just understanding about it from things like the hand drill to something like the bow drill for uh friction 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 fire making it probably started like that it probably started with a hand drill and somewhat realized hey it's easy it's easier to do it with less effort give or well relatively speaking using a, a string that I got I mean a string uh, something to, uh, like a bow string used from like sinew from like an animal that we just per se you know, God, however long ago, right, and stuff like that, and they, they, they realize, oh, this is much easier, and stuff like that, and, you know, how, you know, that old saying where everything you see, or, or like, on the shoulders of the giants, the shoulders of the past, as they say. And really, we are. Everything from, you know, like, ideas of making a knife, having a wedge, two wedges together to make a knife, to things like, uh, like a modern skyscraper where you need cranes and stuff like that where 
all that stems from like pulleys and well, you know, the wheel and axle stuff like that. I mean, but anyways, um, so coming back to it again, but going through the process of it, I mean, like. I mean, when I go through some of this creating and making, I mean, it always stems from a problem, an issue. Trying to make it better. Trying to make things better. And stuff like that. Hello, Kaylin. Thank you, Kaylin, for dropping by. I appreciate it very much. Yes, it's going well. <laughs> you want to try to fire plow? Well, I keep hearing about uh bow drills supposed to be one of the more easier ones to start off with if you want to get into friction fire fire making I mean what there's the hand drill you do that spider thing the bow drill there's that saw thing the plow thing I mean any way you can rub it together, I guess you can make friction and <laughs> make, a, make a coal and get it to an a, a nice con amber and blow it in flame. Oh, anyways, I'm losing. Hello, try, try and surviving. Welcome. I appreciate it very much. You, both of you coming by. Oh yeah, it's this. You finally made it. And like I said, this is more... I, I actually did... Most... Eh, sorry. This is mostly going to be no audio. Just because I'm kind of going through examples and stuff like that. And occasionally I'll move my image around. Just for the hell of it. It's something I made earlier. <laughs> If I actually zoomed it out, you'd see it's actually uh, what they call motion blur in terms of photography. Basically, as it's trying to capture the image, in this case, a digital camera, I'm moving it so it it translates it as motion blur. So streaks and stuff like that. So that's why you're seeing it like that. And of course, of course I chose the color red in this case because red can sometimes mean things like passion or love so I have the love or the passion for creating <clears throat> pretty sure that's uh, pretty uh, noticeable self-explanatory there Oh, yeah, yeah. The morning's going pretty good. It's pretty good. Unfortunately, you know, unfortunately, out here in Western Canada right now, it's lots of smoke. Lots of smoke from out, well, further, further out west. So, I mean, just how it is. I wish I had kind of an answer for that, but, you know, that's a big problem. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's another thing about when you're going through the creation or making process is problem solving you know maybe taking it one step at a time breaking down that problem to more manageable size bite size so let's say I'm gonna use a lot of more survival related things as an example or maybe some other examples. So let's say, um, let's say fire making, for example, right? So if you were trying to make fire and you didn't know how to, or let's say it's in the past, from our great 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 before the ancients, you know, before before the stone age you know that kind of time frame like where things were a little bit more simple not 
the knowledge wasn't available yet because no one thought of it yet. They probably had to break down the problem. Small, made small improvements in whatever it is, let's say fire making, and start to understand it more. And hopefully all these little things that are put together can, well, make a change or potentially solve more of the problem or the issue or help you find a solution for it. Hello, Bayou Prepper. Thank you for taking the time to drop in. Like I said, it's mostly an audio live stream. And besides, it, I don't have to focus so much on the screen so much. I can focus more on the comments this time. That's why I want to do it like this this time around. And you don't want Hold on a second, just for you when Kaylin sit here. Oh, uh, okay, Kaylin. Well, uh, hopefully you have a good time, Kaylin. No. I appreciate you taking the time to swim by. I'm just reading what what Kaylin just wrote here. Well, Caitlin, uh, I don't think Caitlin's still here, but remember, there, I've seen these alternative ways of making a friction fire, so it's not like you always have to sit down for it. So, something just to consider. You might have seen these videos for it, Caitlin, but anyways. Uh, okay, okay. Anyways. What was I saying here? Oh, yeah. The creation or making process. You know, I'm breaking it down into smaller pieces or manageable sizes. Where I guess I'll use something from the 50s and 60s, at, you know, last millennium during the space age, I guess. Or, you know, during the, in the U.S. it'd be like, what, space race and all that stuff. I mean, those, we didn't just get into space right away. No, we had to make small steps, small progress, and gradually, you know, climb or ascend that big hurdle of getting into space. So it started off with, you know, how far can we get up? Can we get up more, higher, higher in, higher in, in the sky, higher in the sky? Oh, can we, you know, oh, hey, we can get into the, you know, the higher atmosphere that's closer to space. Oh, hey, we're getting somewhere and, you know, it goes from there. It was all small little steps, you know, from how to create a little rocket to a really big rocket and you know it takes off from there and you know now we're enjoying the benefits of something like that for example GPS right <laughs> GPS satellites and stuff like that uh, you know other things like uh, positioning type of things for like if you're out in the back country or whatever, skiing or whatever, you can have, uh, what's that called? EPO, I believe. I believe that's what it's called, EPO or something like that. So, you know, a distress beacon and stuff like that. I mean, that all came because back in the 60s and 50s and 60s with the space race and all that stuff. But, I mean, that was small little progress. And again, like I said, a lot of times, small little things can make a big change. Small little steps can make a pretty big step. You might not see, you know, no one can see the finish line at times, or how it's going to turn out at times. 
but Garou is like, hey, I'm taking that step towards it. And I feel like I can see it in the distance. I feel like it's more tang tangible. Tangible. I can feel it in my hands. I can smell it. Stuff like that. You know, it's just that, it's like that race. You know. I gotta keep going. You know, start, you know, where, hey, I start seeing the finish line. Where it gives you more and more motivation to doing something. Always, I see Kaylin still here. That's cool. That's cool. Oh, I see, yeah, yeah. I've known about that for you for a while now. You mentioned it here and there. <laughs> the tricorder from Star Trek. To be honest, I think it, it's probably one of those pieces that tech that we have actually overcame are better in real life than in the movies or in the uh, science fiction. They had the tricorders where it basically just did voice. Now we got ability to transmit text messages, text uh, transmit audio, well audio, we've had that for a while, right? From flip phones and you know, from all the way from the past recorded phones to sending short messages through um, Morse code and stuff like that from early on from writing and letters and stuff like that but now we can transmit video hell we can transmit high definition video to 4k video Yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. <laughs> see, I knew it. Someone knew. Trying, trying already knew what I was talking about. That one video from Really Big Monkey. Sorry about the chair. I really should address this issue about my chair. I think I'll keep that in mind. I mean, so yeah, I mean, a lot of times when I'm creating or making, I'm just addressing an issue that I have in front of me you know it's not maybe it's not you know a lot of issues or problems that one could solve i mean it's not so unwilling that you can't do it but like maybe more everyday type of issues or problems just as like where you just gotta find a, pro a solution for it you know you might think oh this is and sometimes problems can be very complex or issues can very be very complex we're breaking it down in simpler smaller bits bite sizes and tackle the small things and hopefully all these small changes small little tweaks you know things you created to help solve that little issue Hopefully all of these will come together to solve this bigger issue or problem that you're facing in front of you at that time, whatever it is. You know, it could be as small as I, I, I gotta, I gotta, you know, I'm just using an example, obviously, but I, I gotta, I rip my pants and. I'm in the middle of a shopping center in the washroom or something like that. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm using that as an example, right? Where you're just like, you gotta, you, you, you have to, it's an issue now for you because for whatever reason it happened. And I'm like, you're realizing some, you're breaking it down the problem where, okay, all you gotta do, you know, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll go with that just because not only is it funny, <laughs> but in theory, I guess it could happen. So, you know, business person, uh, business clothes, splits a pair of pants, or a big rip, whatever, right? Now you, 
you can't per se uh, just leave and you weren't prepared enough in a head in advance to <laughs> consider ripping pads as something to bring extra of. <laughs> you have extra shoes! <laughs> Sneakers and stuff like that, but you're like, hmm, I didn't see me needing a pair of extra pads. Now, you know, a simple solution is probably gonna be like a sewing. A sewing kit needle thread and stuff like that. Yeah. That's gonna be an easy thing. But let's say you didn't have that. You had to start improvising, for example. Now you have this problem. You don't have the right tools. Just for whatever reason. I don't know. Let's say let's say it happened you split your pants or whatever a shirt or whatever. You're in the washroom trying to hide from everyone because, you know, you feel embarrassed and stuff like that. And you have, like, 20 minutes to get to a meeting or it gets to a specific location to see someone or to talk to someone or give a speech or whatever, right? And you're just like, uh, and, you know, you got a sewing kit and for some, or something, you know where there's a thread and needle, but it's too far away you can't access it right now so coming back to the stone before the stone age with friction fire they, they didn't have that beforehand so they didn't actually they couldn't see it beforehand once once they learned more about friction fire they're like oh yeah I can bring this in and bring this in because they have they can have access to it when you don't have access to something, you know, sometimes you just gotta think through it. Maybe even think outside the box a little. I mean... So, coming back to the... Pants... Thing. Maybe you're thinking of something else. You're just like... Oh, oh you know, you're just thinking, okay, all I gotta do is... Put it together and hopefully no one knows this until I can get to this sewing kit that's on the opposite side of the building or whatever or like way down the hall in your office for example and you're just like uh, you know and you're just thinking I'm like so maybe you're thinking oh I just gotta put them put it together so no one sees it all right okay uh for example you have tape with you Maybe, maybe you, you have your wallet, your purse with you, for example. Now, I guess I'll use more of a, a preparedness thing, but maybe you have tape with you, I mean, on a card, in your wallet, on a card. Or maybe you actually keep a roll with you. You're just like, okay, I'll just tape the inside. And so, as long as no one sees the scene of the split, no one will notice, and I can get back to the office, shut the door, shut the blinds, and sew it up, and no one will know. And I'll have enough time, and no one will ever know. <laughs> so you're solving, you're trying to solve through this problem of creating a solution for it. A little b Billy Bird. Thank you for taking the time to drop in. I appreciate it very much. So. <laughs> no, I'm using it as an example. I'm trying to kind of make it a little bit more entertaining too. And like I said, there's a reason why I don't have uh, video. Well, actually, it is video. It's more like static video. I'll just move my static image around. Just for a little bit. And if anyone's, one, if anyone's wondering, Red here is supposed to present my passion, my love for creating. <laughs> so, I figure I add that in. And of course, no one wants to just see me standing in front of the camera talking without any examples. And besides, you guys can just listen because it's the information that's more important. So, 
Yeah, okay, let's go back to this example that I had here. About splitting of the pants, right? So, you manage to get back. And, you know, now you're able to sew it back up. And, you know, you found a more permanent solution. The tape was just a temporary solution. A temporary fix so you can get to that next step. If that makes sense. I mean, sometimes you're going to get to that midway point, that checkpoint before you can cross the finish line. Because if you don't, unfortunately, if you can't get to that checkpoint, checkpoint, or uh, the midway point, for example, or the, that midway plateau, you can't get to the finish line, you can't get to that upper level, that upper plateau. Because you can just can't, you can't make that, let's just say you're going to make multiple steps to get there. You just, there's no way of doing it with just one step. So coming back to that example of the, the pants thing, yeah, you have that sewing kit, but you didn't, you didn't make you rip your pants on the way, you know, oh I got, you know what? Okay, I'll use the washroom before I take off for this meeting, and uh, yeah, something happened in there, right? You have your sewing kit, but it's all the way back in your office. So you have to find a temporary solution so you can get to your more permanent solution. Or you're trying to think and, like, you know, and stuff like that. I mean, I never. This temporary solution. Depending, like, obviously, it depends what you're wearing and depends where that rip is and stuff like that. But it could be as easy as, let's say, it would it'd probably be a little bit more weird. You're definitely probably going to get looks in an office type environment, but you have your uh, suit jacket on if you're, uh, if you're, or something. And you wrap it around your waist. Yeah, it's not gonna look pretty. And probably people are gonna ask you, but no one knows the real secret while you have it on. Now, it's gonna give you another temporary solution to get to that sewing kit, for example. But it's probably not as inconspicuous as something like as tape would be. <laughs> or no one's gonna notice the tape on the inside. <laughs> as long as no one sees that little sticky part through the, through the, I'm not going to use the center word, between the opening, <laughs> and once I notice it, <laughs> but you tying your suit jacket around your waist, that's a little bit more noticeable, <laughs> you know, and assuming that you're trying to make it down the, down the hallway. And hopefully no one's around to notice you. Hopefully everyone's too busy working, doing their own thing, you know, and stuff like that. Yes, trying. I'm pretty sure that video is still up there. It's. I'm trying. I know it's in the swamp area. I I, I can I can remember the video. A lot more, but I'm trying to remember the title of the video. I mean, I guess you can always just uh, kind of mess message him or leave a comment on a different video and just ask him, right, Kaylin, or whoever wants to know about that. But because I'm pretty sure of anyone, the owner of the channel should know the content. They kind of know. Oh, hey, I know. Oh, uh, you mean this video, right? Oh, here, here, it's called blah, 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 or I'll give you a link or whatever, right? Something like that might work. You know, and indirectly find a solution. <laughs> Hello, Lady Aquarius Prepper. Thank you for taking the time to drop in. I appreciate it very much. Woohoo! Sip of coffee! Cheers to that! Cheers to that! 
I'm gonna stir my coffee. So, yes. I'm glad everyone's enjoying my little anecdotes. <laughs> my hypothetical stories. This time around. As I go through, you know. Why? Why? Or how I go through this creation or making process. Or you have an issue or problem like I've been saying. And you try to develop a solution. And like I said, this is mostly an audio thing. Just because it's the information that's more important. And I don't have actual props to back this up. And you, you guys can visually picture the story or the situation or the things that I'm talking about. Yeah, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> well, Shrine had to roast us here. Wait, wait, that's a different thing. <laughs> Never mind. So, anyways, so. And you, when I'm going for the creation or making process, sometimes I'm thinking of, like, now it's easier if I try to give an example, because it's more, uh, you can either smell, it's more tangible, you can kind of see it in your head, versus just abstract things that are like, well, okay, that could be slightly different things or whatever. So, um, let's see here. Trying to think of a good uh, kind of thing to relate it to you guys. Well, anyways, let's say let's say I'm trying to make a fire. Okay, I'll use fire. Everyone can kind of understand fire and stuff like that. No, no specific examples, or you know, I'm not really talking about the fire starting methods or whatever but well, let's say you were trying to make a fire start you know you just got you, you know you, you kind of just got into the preparedness and the survival community learning more trying to understand it and stuff like that you know you really you realize okay fire let's say you know i'm trying to make a fire starter so i have that issue or problem here i want to make a fire starter so I gotta go through this creation or making process of it. So thinking about it, maybe you're drawing stuff down like a spider web. Be like, okay, fire, fire starter. So it's gotta be hot, dry, have some sort of fuel, allow oxygen to come in. It's part of the fire triangle, and be able to get it started with like a flame spark or heat source. So later, ferro rod dead lighter, solar friction fire, and all that stuff. And hopefully, you know, a fl at least a flame and spark would work. So heat sources like so solar and stuff like that, that's a little different. So, you're like thinking, okay, it's, it's gotta repel water. Hopefully it can repel water. Water, water generally doesn't work with, <laughs> with fire, generally speaking. Um, you're like, okay, I gotta figure out a way of making it. Now, obviously, we in the pre in the present time right now, people know about things already, like you know, wax, petroleum products, and stuff like that. Let's say you were, well, new at it, you know. Just thinking logically, for example, it'd be like, okay, I want it to burn well as long as I can, be as small as I, I can get it. Uh, you know, hopefully it'll release lots of heat. Heat's supposed to be good for fire, so lots of heat would be, it can dry out stuff. You know, just something like that. And you're just kind of trying to come up with it, and you're just, 
well, basically what I'm aiming towards is, you know, you're considering uh, what qualities or characteristics you want from this kind of solution. So coming back to problem with the fire again, you know, you realize fire, water's not a good thing. Cold's not a good thing. Getting wet, damp. Uh, you know, wind chilled. Yeah, no, not wind chilled. <laughs> wind could be an issue. And you're realizing that. And you, you want characteristics, qualities that address that. Or that can minimize that kind of stuff. So, in terms of staying dry, uh, repelling water, for example, you use wax. Wax can keep something dry initially, I guess, until it dries up, until it dries onto it. <laughs> but it repels water. And I guess to a certain extent, it kind of beeps up your fire starter that you're trying to make or whatever with a little bit more fuel all that it can burn hey thanks Billy Bear <laughs> uh, marshmallow hey yes 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 so yeah those, that's another thing I remembering qualities or the characteristics that I want from the solution I'm trying to, you know, address this, let me say that again, where I'm looking for characteristics and qualities or the solution to the problem that I'm trying to find, where, you know, I'm going through this creation or making process of it, and it's like, okay, I want this, Is what do I know right now that could do that? Or could do that and sometimes coming back to an earlier example that I gave in the live stream about a combination type of tool or a compound type of tool basically putting two things together two things two smaller things that give that are put to, that are put together are better than the sum of both things, the sum of the parts. So, hand axe with a stone, which is basically a wedge, and a stick. You know, you combine them, you get <clears throat> a compound type of tool or combination type of tool, which is, well, Relatively speaking, better than the sum of just having a stick and a stone. And basically you're coming towards something where you you would see it more often in the present time. With, you know, like a steel head and stuff like that. But an axe, a hatchet, that kind of thing. And, you know, down the road, you know, there's knives and all that stuff and machetes and all that stuff. So coming back to the fire starter, where with the wax, you're just like, hey, I'm gonna um, get this fire starter, for example, that I want. I want it to be easier to light up. So I don't have to hold a flame or strike a bunch of sparks into it, for example. So when I use this fire starter, it's fast, easy, for example. So let's say you infuse it with some sort of liquid before you put in the wax. Let's say kerosene, for example. That might help. Of course, you know, you have to go through the testing process of it, trying it out. Now, that'll probably be for another video. I probably could do a whole live stream about testing stuff. And stuff like that. Yes, thank you, Billy <laughs> <laughs> All right, trying. Thank you for taking the time to drop in. I appreciate it very much. So, uh, 
I'll just move this around some more. Actually, everyone likes to see eyes, right? Actually, so I'll bring that up. <laughs> you might actually see this image later on in a different video or whatever, but because I took a picture of it at the same time I was recording the video for it. But anyways, Whew. it's already been an hour. Wow, I never realized I would create such a long video. <laughs> <laughs> I stream already. So I'll probably go for another. Let's say. Eh, I'll just keep going. So, yes. Coming back to the creation or making pro pro uh, process. Like I said earlier, sometimes you gotta take little steps. Where. And to get to that, that solution that you want. And sometimes. Like an old teacher once kind of said, now, now this is not math, math, mathematically right, but it's supposed to symbol, uh, kind of be an equation of, well, how, well, basically it was, it goes something like 1 plus 1 equals 11. And you're like, oh, CR, 1 plus 1 doesn't equal 11. Well, you know, in math terms, no. Of course it doesn't, right? 1 plus 1 equals 2. Yeah, 2. Let me count. 1, 2. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Just kidding. But it's it's meant to uh, kind of be an equation of um, you might be able to make one thing. You might be able to make something else, but you start making a lot of things, things can start going together, or combining together, and compounding together, where it becomes, like I said, better than the sum of the parts that are put into it. So again, you know, hand axe, branch, stick. Separate, they do you know, their thing, together, you got a compound type of tool. And then, you start to understand something like that, and you're just like, how, that, I have this kind of, you'll understand when you're going through it, and how things are starting to come together, and how, Something you made, an idea, something you even tried, maybe you've seen it before and stuff like that. Something you bring that idea, so let's say this creation or making of something, uh, let's say Project A, for example, years ago, years ago, something you know, like Google, right? You have a there a nurse uh, problem to address, an issue to address again, to find a solution for. And you're just like, oh, what could work, what could work, right? I got uh, this project B that I'm working on trying to find a solution for this problem or issue, whatever it is, right? It's just like, oh, wow, wow, wow. And you, you're just realizing, okay, I have a temporary solution. Or an adequate solution. In, th in this case, Project B. Then you kind of have this su sudden, sudden, sudden realization, epiphany, and you're just like, oh. And you start to remember from something from like the past, or something else you made, or ideas from the past, and stuff like that. Something that was already previously created or made for maybe a totally different reason, maybe not even related. And you, you're just like, but if I take the concept of Project A that long time ago, right? Let's say two years, three years ago. Hey, if I take this one part and put it into Project from Project A 
and put it into project B here, substitute it, it could work. And then you're using how from previous creations, previous things made and stuff like that to help you find a solution or create a solution for this problem that you have right now in the present. Hopefully that makes sense. So basically, wait. Yeah, hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> All right, Billy Bird. <laughs> well, anyways, hopefully that makes sense. I'll probably go for another uh, five, ten minutes here. There might be another live stream again. Right. Make my uh, kind of videos a little bit more to the point. You know, increase the concentration of the info. <laughs> so, not to go too off board, not to repeat myself too much. So, I'll go for another. Five ten minutes, give or take, probably till like the seventy five minute mark on the video. As I realize, I should be at the sixty five minute mark. So, like I said, five ten minutes. So um, so yeah. So you take that project B now, which you slightly modify using something an idea from project a in this case that you made or seen or did or whatever two three years ago or whatever in the past now you have the solution you know and you're trying it out testing it out and stuff like that and it seems to work and you're just like wow i can't believe something i learned or made two years ago is helping me right now when I need it, like you didn't foresee it in the future, but you know, use the characteristics of it from project A and be like, hey, I can adapt it to this project B right here and find a solution and obtain a solution. Now, this has actually happened to me before where I created kind of, I've, I've actually told the story before in another live stream where I had something I was just making and just like kind of like you know with wheels and you know a wooden base and stuff like that I was making it for I was trying to actually make like some sort of for lack of a better word a dolly a wooden dolly you know now I had issues with it and so I was like ah, and I kind of went away from it you know, I tried it out, I kind of went away from it. I originally had it to put my bags on, then I'm like, ah. I had issues with it and I didn't like it so much. So I decided, I'm like, and, you know, I was using screws, so I'm like, I just kind of took the top portions off, so I had basically a platform with wheels on it. You know, and I just had it around didn't really use it for anything else until until one one day I started I used it to help me sound attack as in like D E C K so a deck that you would barbecue on have you know patio deck called, like a patio deck short story I mean long story short let's just say that platform with wheels came in handy when I had to sand down that deck. I didn't see it. I didn't foresee it. But it was just like I don't know. I don't know how to describe that but I don't I don't even know how to describe it but I know I can't even put it into a word or into a single phrase. You know, maybe for lack of a better words or phrase, a sudden realization. 
where I realized, hey, this actually paid off. It was I used something that maybe wasn't initially what I considered as a solution when I'm like, okay, maybe this could work. Stuff like that. I mean, a lot of the times when I'm trying to find out a, a, a solution to a problem, I'm just like, well, one has worked in the past. Sometimes I'm just like, what could help me here? Can I use some sort of leverage, for example, to help me out? Make them work easier? Stuff like that. And, you know, I came up with something else. Just because actually the problem existed and it was actually real, so I had to find a solution for it. So, anyways. Uh, since it's going to be the last five minutes here, and I usually give a two-minute warning for my live streams, so, you know, whatever, anyone can, anyone wants to ask questions right now, or if you're watching the, re the replay on this, you can leave a comment in, just under the description bar, you can timestamp it for, uh, you know, whatever, say, hey, I got a question for you, CR, or whatever, right, but, you know, what helps in the creation process or the making process? I think for me, if if someone asked me that, what help, how can you get better at creating or making? You know, tools. Tools are gonna be probably one of the single most important things. Just because with tools, you certain tools, you can make a lot more. It becomes easier, for example whatever it is and now tools could be something like a multi-tool like a pair of pliers on like a Gerber or a Letterman or you know something or a, or a Victorinox type of multi-tool all the way to a different type of tool that you would use for like school for making like an essay or whatever for an assignment you would use tablet, phone, or desktop computer, you know, for a non-survival, non-preparedness type of example, you know, something like those type of things all help. Another thing is, keep your mind open to stuff, you know, like I said earlier, some things in the rec, sometimes you're going to take an indirect path to find a solution. It's not always a straight A to B. Sometimes you gotta go A, A and half, then B. Or you can't make that straight B line to it. No, you gotta make a right a hard right angle, then come up to find that solution. Just because it's just the way it is. It's just the way it's just the way it is at that time. For whatever reason. Hey, thank you very much, Kaylin. I appreciate your support. I'll uh, take care of Kaylin. Have fun at your things and all that stuff. Uh, so yeah. Um, what else? What I wanted to say was um. So I talked about the. You know what could help you create or make better. Another, I guess another thing is just just go do it. Just go do it. Sometimes it's like muscle memory. You know, and like I said, the more you create, the more you have, the more you have to go with. So coming back to like the Stone Age type of thing, it real you know, wooden wooden spears, wooden clubs, stuff like that. You know, for bashing or, you know, spearing or a lot of that stuff, you know. Then you have, like, a hand axe that's made from stone, which is basically a wedge. And, you know, maybe it's a flint, a flint napped, right? But, 
two things created, made. Oh well, I can put them together, and now I have combined them together. And in this case, they're better than some of the parts that are, were put into it in the first place. So, yeah. Anyways, I think I will get out of here for this live stream with the next two minutes here. So, I want to say special thanks to everyone that dropped by on this live stream. And it was kind of a little bit more plain, a little bit different. Hopefully, everyone enjoyed some of this stories and really the idea behind what I go through which I just realized I didn't I just realized I put where instead of what in there on the description so yeah this is what I go through When I go through the creation or making from it because of an issue or problem and trying to figure out or develop a solution. Speak of making and creating, I will actually update my description on it. This looks a little bit more. I didn't think it through for through the wording. So I'll change that in a bit here. So yeah, this is what I go through in the creation or making progress. Yeah, to find out, you know, a solution or develop a solution to issue our problem. <laughs> I guess there was a little bit more than chit chat. And I was trying to kind of relate it out a little bit more outside of the survival bushcrafting preparedness community. Kind of. Because the creation of making side is kind of more important. Right. I'm more, let's just say, I'm more of a, I rather make my own survival tent with things. Just because if I can create it once, I can create it again if need be. And you know, I understand it a little bit more. And that's another thing of what I like about going through the creation or making progress. I, f I feel a deeper... How do I say a deeper connection to to what I'm making? Just because I've made it with my own two hands, with my mind. Now, obviously, the knowledge and the skill, the knowledge came from like, you know all over the world now. Obviously, right? Well, everyone does research online, right? But sometimes you sometimes even on the internet, you can't specifically find a solution. You're just like, uh, that's not what I'm really looking for. Or you can find out information about something, but it's like, wow. But you still have to figure out a solution for it. Or develop a solution for it. Okay. I just have to update my description over here. And I guess it would be nice if I spell right. I was never really great at spelling at times, but that's because I tend to pronounce spell things more phonetically. This is the way I learned things. Well yeah, exactly, right? Hands on experience too, right? I mean You know, you want to, I would 
learn something and understand it and go kind of go through the process of it versus just being shown it because sometimes you know sometimes the best way to know something is just to do it with your own just to go through it on your own you know no one can teach someone well I shouldn't say that no one can teach someone how to create or make even I can't do that but I can show you guys kind of how I did it to mimic it you know understanding it what what my rationale not rationality um my thinking behind it but you know you gotta sometimes just do it on your own just like those videos, you know. However you do it, you just just kind of go do it. And like anything created or made, you know, it's subjected, subject, subjected to you know, everyone's opinion, right? Some things are made or created or are better than or could be better than Earth. Right, it's all subjective, you know. So, anyways, <laughs> since I'm rambling on, I want to say, uh, oh yeah, I already said special thing. So, hit me up on the thumbs up if you enjoy the creation process or the making process as much as I do, and you enjoy combining things together. Sometimes you never know what you can create until you go do it. You might think you see something in the distance. You might think you see you're on that plateau at the checkpoint. You might think you see the finish line. But until you crawl, walk, run, or bike, or cycle it, and do it, and experience it, sometimes what you see at the finish line, line the course that you took isn't one you had in mind but it was just how do I say a different path that you took to that you took to get there I'm pretty sure that makes sense it was kind of more metaphoric but hopefully that will all make sense so it's time for the outro like always, as the world changes, so must oneself to reach a new level of skill and knowledge one must practice. A single person can't help everyone in this world, but one person, regardless of race, gender, age, can help someone in this world. And until the next video slash live stream slash replay static video etc etc until you see me the next time it's peace out from the guy that's 98.6% of the time <laughs> in creation mode because obviously you know there's other things that happen it's peace out from CR and I'll catch you next time and thanks for dropping in <laughs>